Baptist Girls' School in London has said that she is stopping to referring to her students as girls so as not to alienate any transgender pupils. James Allen's Girls' School head teacher, Sally Ann Huang, has replaced the pronoun she with they and refers to pupils, not girls. She says she wants to be sensitive to those considering changing their sex. This comes after a school in East Sussex banned skirts in favour of a gender-neutral uniform. So is Mrs Huang right, or is she taking away the female identity? Joining us to discuss from Central London are Julie Bindle, the feminist campaigner and writer, and Jane Fay, who's a writer and campaigner on LGBT issues and is trans herself. Thank you very much indeed both for your time. Julie, if I can start with you, is this a risk to the female identity? Well, the problem with it is, of course, sex has been a protected category because of the discrimination that girls and women suffer at the hands of boys and men. So in the same way as race is a protected category, so we can document how many attacks or or areas of discrimination faced by black people and, and people of colour. We have the same legislation that feminists have fought for for decades, protecting girls and women. So it's not so much as what, whether or not it's crazy uh, using uh, gender neutral pronouns or not using the term girls. I'm glad that there are gender neutral uniforms, for example. As a feminist, I want to see do away with gender, but it's the fact that we are now in a position where, for example, if we have male to female transgender rapists and child abusers and child pornography consumers being recategorised as female, it means that on the crime statistics, it looks as though women are committing these crimes. So we need to know who's being discriminated against, which is girls and women, and who's doing the discrimination in order to change things as feminists and as campaigners. Jane, what do you make of what Julie said there? Oh, hello. Hi. I, I totally agree. You need to keep the categories for when you need to use them. And uh, the difficulty I have as somebody who has worked as a statistician in the past is that what Julie is talking about really doesn't add up. I mean, it literally doesn't add up. The numbers being referred to are infinitesimal. I think we might have got one or two people who are recategorised in the serious crime side. But I would also take issue with the problem here, which is that this story is broadly not true. Um, if you actually read the headmistress's blog, she hasn't given up calling girls girls. She has said outright that she is still headmistress of a girls' school. She used the term they and was very careful about her gender in dealing with one pupil who was trans and um, had to talk to her about a very personal issue. In other words, what we're getting here is the good old political correctness gone mad. And Julie, I know you're a little bit younger than I, but you must remember what the 80s were like, all this sort of nasty things going on in, uh, in, in sort of South London councils. It's not true. There isn't a transgender agenda. And I agree with you that you have still got to be calling women, women where they exist. Julie, uh, are you extrapolating too much from this? No, <clears throat> like Jane, I was very sceptical about the story, which is exactly why I said it, it's actually irrelevant whether or not this particular head teacher is dropping the term girls. I would like to see an end to gender apartheid, where girls are categorised as girls as very distinct from boys, rather than just being referred to and dealt with as human beings. I don't really approve of the fact that we have to... Um, really classify any human being as to whether they are male or female. However, it still is the case that whether or not crime statistics are being skewed by men who identify as women are committing sex crimes or not. What remains the case is that there is a terrible issue of discrimination that girls and women face. We need to still hang on to the language for now until we have equality then we won't have to categorise, we won't have to list how many girls, for example, are raped or suffer FGM or forced marriage, how many women suffer domestic violence as opposed to men. But the other really important thing I'd like to say is we need to be asking questions as to why girls, because now there are a number of girls who wish to transition to become male, are doing so. Why is it that life for these girls is such hell that rather than thinking that they can change things so that they can end discrimination towards them, they decide to opt out by becoming boys, because that is what I think is a big problem. Okay, there well, are gender, gender identity well, specialists that are actually targeting teenage girls and, and giving them and dangling a carrot in front of them and saying, this could end your problems. Okay, Jane, is that I, happening, I, what Julie's talking about? I can't... 
I don't have the research and Julie doesn't have the research to say whether this is or isn't happening. My sense is that you can never say never to something happening when you're talking about something going on globally. There's going to be some extreme issues, but what Julie does and what Julie specialises in is picking an extreme example and pretending that it's what is going on typically. Now, I'm in the middle of writing a book and two things have happened whilst I'm writing this book. First and foremost, the book is about a trans woman who died two years ago. And she spent her teen years being told that she had to be gay and being told that she must grow up as gay, etc., etc. And that may well have contributed towards the outcome. And then last week, we have an issue of a trans teen boy, again, partly contributing. I'm never going to say this is all of the story, but a trans boy who killed themselves, and part of that was because they were not recognised for the trans side. In other words, yes, there are going to be people who are trans who are identified as gay, and there are going to be people who are gay who are identified as trans. We need to work together, we need to do some research to make sure this is not happening on either side, and not come up with some mythical, oh my god, the gender identity clinics are kidnapping our, our, our gay people. I don't think that is happening. Said, Jane. This is not what I said at all. What I said was beyond anecdotal. It's, it's evidenced that, that girls on social media are being targeted by independent gender identity specialists, privately run, and saying, do you wish to transition? Do you feel that you're male? Do you feel gender non-binary? Come to my clinic. And it is happening over and over again. Girls that used to actually be offered feminism as a solution to the disquiet and the discrimination they faced now have something else on offer. So why aren't you, why aren't you offering them feminism, Julie? But this is exactly what I spend all of my time doing, Jane. OK. OK, Jane, Julie, uh, we'd love to spend more time talking about this, but we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed you. Uh, for having the conversation. Appreciate it.